you've got to keep yourself super uncomfortable. It's counterintuitive. Uh, but the more uncomfortable you make yourself, the more you try different things, the more you experiment, you've got to have this sort of uh, tension in order to create something interesting. So I've always wanted to come to this place. And I was sitting by uh, Philippa at lunch. I hope you guys all have the chance to sit by Philippa. She says like really wonderful, gentle things. Uh, she's great. And one thing she mentioned was this, um, uh, when I was just at Burning Man, there was this sculpture there called Embrace. And it was a, a man and woman, huge sized, just coming out of the desert. And they're holding each other. It's made out of wood. It's just artistically gorgeous, but also very moving to see two humans so, so big like this. And it cost like a quarter million dollars to make. It took a ton of hours from like 40 people, this team, to build this thing up. Amazing. And then after three days, they burned the whole thing down. And it was just very uh, personally moving to me. This idea that things are so ephemeral, that everything is so sadly ephemeral from like relationships, they just kind of burn away. Um, things we build, they just kind of drift away with time. And as much as we want things to be permanent, they just aren't. But then again, things renew. But when things are gone, there's just sort of this, this emptiness, this hollowness, this sort of, this silence of things that aren't there anymore. And so I'm thinking about that a lot while I'm here. And I know it's easy to get excited and say, oh cool, I'm gonna go take pictures of sand dunes inside of a dilapidated house. Well, try to get beyond that. Think about a, a story you might want to tell in your photography. Think about sadness or hollowness or silence. What is it that you're trying to say with your photo? Have some emotion, something more there than just a picture of, a, of sand in a house or sand beside a house. And I think if you kind of think about this, think about, you know, ephemeral things in your life you thought it might have been forever and they've and they've just fallen away and they're gone. Um, so bring some emotion into it, have a story, don't just go blindly into it. And I think that you might end up with possibly a more interesting photo, okay? So that's kind of our, our challenge here for the day. It's uh, my challenge as well. All right. When I first got here, I didn't totally know what to expect. I was going to try to connect with, you know, some sort of uh, emotion and see if I could uh, make a certain kind of shot happen. And, you know, coming in, I, I thought maybe um, sadness might be there, right? But actually, that's not what I found at all. I found something totally different. And I was, you know, I was okay exploring the, the sadness. I think I think that's actually a fairly nice thing to be in touch with because it's, you know, it's one of those basic human emotions, and there's nothing, nothing wrong with it. In fact, I, I don't know. I find sometimes people run away from sadness a little too much. I think it's okay to be sad because um, I think actually only with extreme sadness um, comes extreme happiness, and um, you know, you can pretty much guarantee people that you know that are really happy. Um, they also have real sadness too, but maybe you just don't see it. So when I was when I was coming in here um, and thinking about this, I was thinking about all these various emotions, and I know that there's um, some people, maybe, and I don't know if this comes through in the media or what, but um, they just kind of want to maybe not have any sadness and have just sort of this, I guess, mediocrity or average, and then be happy. But I don't think it's really like that. And I think it's okay to fully, fully explore all these kind of natural things that happen to you as a human. 
I think photography is actually a really fun way to explore them. Because if you do feel things very deeply, um, photography and art is a great way to kind of explore this. There's this quote that I might get a little bit wrong here, uh, but a photograph is a secret of a secret. And the more it tells you, the less you know. And I think about this a lot in terms of photography as I've been walking around this place. And when I'm walking around this place alone, I do start to think about all these things, you know. Uh, I start to think about um, the more photographs you take, the more you get to know yourself. And kind of the more you get to know yourself, the more you kind of figure out what a, what a mystery you are, right? And, and I think that's kind of a cool thing. Um, it's the same kind of thing in science. Like the more, the more you get to know, the more you realize you don't know. And is it that unusual? You would think that, <laughs> you would think the more that you explore a certain kind of topic, just the more you would master it. But actually, I think the opposite happens. Um, I certainly feel that way with photography. Because, of course, I, you know, I, I know how to use the camera better, and I, I, I get better and better at composition and color and light at all these things. But the, the number of mysteries um, are increasing. Uh, month by month, year by year. I think that's kind of a wonderful thing, and I think it's kind of maybe a reflection of me. Um, you know, the more I know about myself, the more I realize I don't know. But I'm pretty comfortable with that. I think it's kind of awesome. Um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So, you know, we're, when we're walking in this place, I should maybe explain what it is. <laughs> I haven't really done that yet. This is an amazing place. We're on the edge of Namibia. And you might have seen, this is a, kind of a rare thing. I might do it once or twice a year, but we, we bring a, a group of people on a little adventure. And this is an old um, diamond mining town. And it was completely abandoned when it was overtaken by these sand dunes. And it's just incredible how uh, time and sand has just kind of obliterated this place and is slowly taking it back over. And I thought that the ephemeral nature of this place, seeing like the destruction of something that so many people had built and lived in, I thought it would be kind of sad. Um, <clears throat> but that's not what I felt. For whatever reason, you know, we started together and then the whole group kind of dispersed to kind of, you know, find their own fortune in, in various buildings and this sort of stuff, which is perfectly fine. Um, and I kind of went off by myself too. And what I felt was just loneliness. Uh, which isn't what I really expected to feel. And loneliness uh, is a strange thing, isn't it? I think, you know, as photographers, we spend a, an inordinate amount of time alone. And it's kind of a wonderful thing. I, in a way, <laughs> I am um, I'm, I'm an introvert. I'm an INTJ. I don't know if you've ever seen that Myers-Briggs test. But you can take this little personality test, and it tells you something about yourself. <clears throat> Seems pretty accurate, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, as an introvert, I, I do prefer to spend time alone. You know, I can be at maybe at parties for a little while or big cities for a little while, but I, I do like to go off and, you know, sit by a tree by myself and think or just be, or just meditate or whatever. Uh, but there seems to be a strange correlation between loneliness and being alone. And I think it's actually just fine to be alone. It's kind of a wonderful thing. You get to be with yourself and with your thoughts or not with your thoughts and just naturally be. And so as I was working in and out of these rooms and taking photos and taking my time, um, I was just wonderfully alone. Not lonely. And this is a nice place to be. As you start to explore these parts of yourself and these parts of your photography, what ends up happening, quite by surprise, is you become more vulnerable and more open, and you show more of your heart. And this actually comes out in your photography. And people can sense your openness, and the openness of your heart, and your vulnerability in your photography. So, you know, I'd encourage you to keep exploring that side. Um, 
you know, you keep the sciencey stuff and all the tech stuff going too to make sure you have a base fundamental understanding of what's happening with uh, not just your camera settings but the post processing. But then, you know, stop steering and start floating. And that's when you can have some really magical stuff happen with both you and your photography. So I got a little moody there, but I had some chocolate and everything is good again. Everything's right in the world. And we'll just continue the rightness by doing a little HDR action. All right. I think this would be a fun shot to show you HDR on. HDR, in case you don't know, is a acronym for high dynamic range. Um, I've actually had a tutorial on my website forever and I kind of help teach people HDR. And this photo here, you can see these three, three shots. Uh, this is a really good case study for HDR because there's so much light in this room. There's that bright light. If you look at the dark exposure, you can see how everything outside is perfectly exposed. But if we look at the, the bright exposure, you can see how all the shadows are nicely exposed. And of course, the idea is that your, your eye can see, see all of this. And I do like the subject matter here in that it does you know, kind of have this mix of uh, being alone and feeling lonely. So let's go ahead and help this thing be totally fully realized artistically and kind of set people's minds adrift with what can be. We'll kind of ride that line between fantasy and reality. And I think HDR helps you do that. So let's just go for it. All right. Just go for it. That's what I say. Don't hold back. So let's grab these three photos here. And I'm going to drag them into Photomatix. Okay, so I'm going to pick these three photos up and pull them into Photomatix. There's many ways to get photos into Photomatix. This is just one way. All right. And you'll see me do this many times in many other episodes, so you'll, you'll get the hang of it. All right. So it's asking if I want to open these files. I say yes. And then I've got the three files here, just confirming it. I say yes, these are the three photos I like to use. All right. Now we get these options, sort of options screen. And these are the options that I have active 98% of the time. Okay, I took these three images on a tripod. And I'm not going to do any ghost removal here. I'm not going to do any noise reduction. I might if this was a night shot, but it's not. And I will reduce the chromatic aberrations here. Okay, so I'm going to say align and merge to HDR. So now what's happening is this HDR algorithm is looking at the different uh, pixels and the three different images and choosing uh, which of them to show based on its nearest neighbors. All right. It's a little bit like compositing, except it happens on the pixel by pixel level. All right. So here's our little dialogue here. And this is where we get to play and have fun with a shot. All right. Um, so what's happening here with this interface? If it's your first time seeing it, I'll just kind of take you on a little tour de force. Um, over here on the left are all our wonderful Willy Wonka-esque sliders that we get to move to and fro to make the image look more awesome possum. Over here on the right are all of our presets that kind of help us generate ideas. Uh, these happen to be Trey's Photomatics presets. Um, it's quite vaingloriously named, you'll notice, but... Uh, I've been working with this for so many years, I've come up with some really cool presets. And they always depend on different situations. And I kind of use these for just quick idea generation. And you see, sometimes they work for certain kinds of photos, but not for other kinds of photos. Isn't it amazing all these different looks you get just by clicking around? Um, some are just ridiculous. There's some black and white ones. There's some super moody ones down here. And generally, the further you go down my presets, the more drug-induced they become. Uh, so we're going to stay up here sort of in the recreational drug area. Um, and I think one that looks like looks pretty good here are some of these um, ones that kind of feed on the yellowness of it all. I kind of like this one. Under the Green Sea looks quite nice. Um, Find Me Now looks pretty nice. Colorful Daydream. Basic Black Dress. It's a little too HDRE. But let's go back to Under the Green Sea right here. We'll slide around the tonal range compression until we get something that looks good. And by the way, you know, as you move this stuff around, it's, it's good to move it extreme uh, just to see what happens. Because if you just move it a little bit, you're like not sure what's happening. Okay. 
By the way, with every one of these, you get different sliders. So there's no use in memorizing them. Just come in here and play with it like a kid. You're not going to mess anything up. All right, so don't worry about messing anything up. Let's play here with the white clip. Uh, let's move up the black clip a little bit. Uh, let's adjust the color saturation. I do like it kind of yellow. I'll keep, keep it kind of amped up there because we can always dial it back a little bit later. Now I'll say apply. Okay, while I say apply, my youngest daughter has walked in the room. Hello, Scarlett. Hi, Dad. How are you? <laughs> Good. Why? What's that? Well, I'm recording a video. Are you talking about the candy on my desk? What is it? Is it a chocolate candy? Yes, it's, it's chocolate. Hold on, I'm selecting medium sharpening here. I'm going to say done. This is... Um, this is chocolate that Belle brought me. Isn't that nice? And we've just been kind of eating out of it like wayward animals all day. Would you like one? Okay. All right. Okay, if I give you one, will you um, go away until I finish making this yeah. tutorial? Yes. All right. I like that I can buy your obedience with chocolate. Okay, see ya. All right. See you in the funny papers. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you one. I'm making a video here, woman. All these girls just constantly want chocolate. I'm trying to teach the world HDR. You already took out all the dark chocolate ones. Okay, here you go. Here you go. Catch that. All right. Yeah, good catch. Good catch. All right, let's get back to work here. My God. So, we're done with this. I'm going to save it. Sorry for that interruption. I'm just letting it flow, though. Okay. I'm going to save it here in this directory called Processing. Okay. And you'll get to know my workflow here over time. Um, the idea here, basically, let me tell you this, is that that image that you just saw is not going to be the final image. Now, it's actually, I think it's honestly good enough to be the final image, but I want to do a few more tweaks to it, all right? And let me just alt-tab back and forth here to show you the amount of uh, change that we've just gone through. That's a tremendous amount of change. So. Um, this is what we ended up with, with HDR, and that's what we started with. That's just the basic photo right out of the god dang camera, right? And, you know, when you're there, it's like fully alive, and you can see all this stuff with the human eye, but when the camera shoots it, you're like, oh, how disappointing. You know, it's like super sad emoticon. But you see this, and it's super happy Japanese emoticon. So, anyway... Now let's try to make this one make as good as we can, or make it look as good as we can. So let's press D to jump to the develop module. And let's pull up the shadows and the blacks, pull down the whites and the highlights, increase the contrast, uh, the clarity kind of helps give it that HDR look a little bit, a little bit of vibrance. Okay, good. It's looking pretty nice. It's still pretty dark though, isn't it? So let's, let's increase the overall exposure here a little bit. Let's pull up the shadows even more. Okay, there's looking kind of nice. Not too bad. Now, one thing, and I was thinking about this when I look at this, um, at this one, I love how golden all the sand is down here and how warm it is. Um, I also love the light coming into these slats and the warmth up here. Um, the wallpaper looks so nice too, doesn't it? So, maybe let's just see what it looks like if I cool this off a little bit. Mostly just for the um, for the wallpaper, uh, because I'm planning on mixing the two together. All right, and this is you'll find this out slowly over time with my technique. Is that it's a little bit like making a, a recipe in that you'll never end up with the same photo twice. I just kind of generate a few different ideas in Photomatix and Lightroom, and then I combine them all together into kind of one ring to rule them all. But it's totally different. It's based on my mood. It's based on how much chocolate I have to hand out in the middle of post-processing. Um, there's many factors at work in my process. All right, so um, you'll notice that I just did a little bit of noise reduction. Um, I think that's about all I need to do. All right, I think that's looking not too bad. So this photo looks all right. It's serviceable. All right, so I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to export this as a JPEG to that same directory. I just happen to have a preset that, that does that. Again, don't worry if I go too fast. You're going to see this kind of stuff time and time again throughout the episodes. All right, so now this one has been exported. You can tell the export progress right up there in the corner. I'm going to jump back into Adobe Bridge. Okay, Adobe Bridge is sort of an unnecessary part of the equation, uh, but I just use it for one exact purpose. 
These are photos I was working on earlier, by the way. I'll give you a sneak preview of those here when I'm, I'm done. Um, let me delete those because those are sort of the, um, uh, the working products that went into the final product, okay? Just like these two are going to be combined into uh, Wonder Twin Powers to activate. So I'm gonna say Tools, Photoshop, Load Files into Photoshop Layers. Okay, here they come. You might have seen a sneak peek there, but uh, just erase that from your memory. I'll use one of those men in black, black thingies on you. Okay, so I've got these two uh, photos here, okay? You can see they're piled up on top of each other. All right, so I'm gonna activate both of them and I'm going to align them. Okay, so I'm gonna go to edit, um, auto align layers, okay? Because they get a little bit off, a little bit herky-jerky with uh, Photomatic sometimes. Since we're gonna combine them, we wanna make sure they're right on top of each other, okay? So if we hide the top layer with this little eyeball clicker thing, we can see what it looks like underneath. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna keep the warmth on the bottom and the top, and then maybe have some coolness on the walls um, in the middle, okay? And so that's why we have this cooler level underneath, all right? So I'm gonna create a layer mask. You do that by clicking on this Japanese flag here. All right, then I'm I'm gonna pick a brush. That brush looks good. About 40% on my opacity or so. And then I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller and then just kind of start brushing through the slightly cooler wall. Okay, otherwise the whole thing gets a little too hot yellow. And if you don't have some transition in, uh, in color, then the eye just becomes a little bit too kind of uh, blown out into the, uh, into the warm zone. So if we cool this stuff off, if we cool off these walls, it'll make the, the ceiling and the ground and the sand look even warmer, okay? But if everything just has sort of this yellow tinge to it, then, then it loses some of that effect. All right, there we go. Let's clean up that. Good, good, good. Okay, so everywhere that I colored, if I click here, you can kind of see what I did, right? And if I hide the layer beneath, you can kind of see um, where I poked through to the layer beneath, okay? So I kept the warmth on the top and bottom and poked through um, in some of these cool areas, all right? Awesome. So I'm gonna take these two, I'm gonna select both of them by shift clicking them and right click and say merge layers. All right, let's do a little bit of um, cropping here. Let's crop it a little bit. We've kind of got this hard brick thing here, which is kind of interesting. I think I'll leave it there. And then we've got some of the peeled paint on the far right side, which is kind of cool too. So we'll leave that, pull this down. Good, all right. Um, so this is coming along. Now, remember, um, some of these steps I'm going through might be a little bit overkill for you. Um, you don't have to go through all of these steps that I go through. I'm sometimes a bit over the top. Remember, if you just looked at this one, you know, I made that in about three minutes. Okay, um, so, beep, 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 where are we at here? Now, what I like to do is make it a little bit more textury, okay? Especially on the walls. We're gonna use another plugin to make that happen, all right? I hate to add a lot of complexity here in such an early lesson, but we're gonna do it anyway, because it's, it's cool. All right, we're gonna go up here to filter, and filter in Photoshop is where you have access to your other um, plugins, okay? We're gonna use this one from Mac Fun Software called Intensify Pro, all right? And you have access to a lot of these plugins too from Lightroom. Let's say you just wanna stick in Lightroom, which is perfectly fine. You can also access these plugins through Lightroom. But there's one thing you can't do, which I will show you shortly. So Intensify has all of these different uh, presets. It's just got a ton of them. And I start a few of them into my favorites. Uh, but this one, like Absolute Clarity, is really nice. Artistic is a little bit you know, over the top, but kind of cool. Um, let's do Artistic, and then we'll go into Adjust, and let's increase the overall exposure. I find Artistic makes it a little bit darky dark. Okay, let's get those, let's get those shadows up a little bit too. What happened to the highlights here? Whoa. Yeah, cool, right on. 
And let's play with the, the contrast here on the midtones to really play with the light here a little bit. And let's cool it off a little bit more because we've accidentally warmed up the whole situation, haven't we? Let's drop down that exposure. It's get a little hot. Okay. Good, good, good. All right, so now I'm going to say um, apply. Now, here's the thing that you can't quite do in Lightroom that I like to do in, in Photoshop, is I like to make um, different parts of the photo look different ways. And the thing is, when you're in Lightroom, it makes the whole photo look like um, the effect that you just did, okay? Like in this case, I just want the walls to do that. But I like the other version, because you can see it made the, the ground a little too extreme and chunky. Same with the skies, just going a bit cray-cray. So let's put the original one up here, and then I'm going to create a layer mask. I have a hotkey for that, and then I assigned myself. And then I'm going to brush through in a really high number just on the walls, and you'll see the walls kind of light up with that nice effect we just did. Really much more intense, a lot more texture. With some very cool blue colors in there, very nice. And I'm going to just kind of alternate back and forth here. I have a hotkey to hide and show what's underneath, just to see what we have going on here. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, so you can see once again, I painted through um, on the walls. I'm not too exact, you could be a little loosey-goosey. And these are soft edge brushes too, so that the transition is smooth, which is important. You don't wanna have a hard transition zone. Okay, so let me combine those into one layer like that. Now let's do a few other little things. There's, you know, obviously this town is a ghost town, it's in ruins. So what happens is you just end up with a lot of trash on the ground, um, which isn't that awesome. Okay, trash is the wrong word. Maybe just some of these pebbles or pieces of wood, um, some of these twigs. Anything that has a really high contrast level, I'm using Content Aware to just kind of pop and get out of there. That's this tool right here, the Spot Healing Brush tool. So anywhere where I see some big uh, chunky chuck, something white or something black or something that just doesn't look really smooth. We'll leave some of it in there, of course, uh, but we're just kind of moving some of these things because you don't really want them to attract the eye too much, do you? Like even uh, this hole here. Let's get rid of that little hole. Good, 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 good. All right, some of these white things down in here. All right, awesome. Looking very, very good. Okay. Yeah, I think I like the way that looks. Very much so. Not too bad. Let's get rid of some of this stuff up here too. Got a little bit, you gotta watch out up here in the corners, you get a little bit of chromatic aberration. There we go, it's looking really good. Let's get some of these white rocks out of here too. Just clear them out of there. Good, 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 good. So let's look at what we started with, shall we? Let's go here to Lightroom and let's just click Reset. Okay, this is the middle exposure. Remember we took three photos, dark, normal, and bright. So this is the normal exposure. Um, let me press uh, F to make that full screen. So this is right out of the camera. And then this is what we ended up with. Oh yeah, check it out. Cool. And I'll show you a few other ones that I just finished um, from this same area. Um, here's one of them. Oops, I'm zoomed in a little bit here. This is another room that's been completely overrun. Um, and one thing I really like about this photo, again, is how we have this warmth, this hot sun warmth coming in from over here. And back over here, we have these cool rooms, you know, that are not feeling that warmth yet. Um, I think it, it tells sort of a nice story, um, especially with the sand coming up. Look, it's all half, it's most of the way up the door. It's, it's re donk donk. All right, so that's that photo. And then here's another one. Let me zoom out a little bit. I think this one's kind of cool. We have sort of this ghostly figure. This is an abandoned hospital, of all things. Awesome. I'm going to show you one little trick that I saved here for you. This is sort of a final step. You might notice that the horizon's not totally straight, and sometimes it's hard to, if you straighten the horizon, some of your vertical lines might get messed up. So if you have the new Photoshop, here's a cool thing you can do. You can go here to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. All right, if you clicky click that, then you have this whole new dialogue that pops up. And there's this one here. I mean, you have these indecipherable, inscrutable German icons 
that some masochist created back in Adobe Labs. So, but at this one is lens corrections. Okay, I feel like I could read hieroglyphics um, with these kind of symbols they do. You see this one here called upright? You click on this one, it's automatic. All right, and it will automatically straighten up everything, put the horizons, and make sure all your verticals are vertical. It works great with architecture shots, so highly recommended. So I'll say OK, and that will be applied, and now that is good. Now we're good to go. Awesome possum. Now um, I'm going to show you some of my favorite other photos from this um, little, little stock we made. Now let me go over here to um, iPhoto. Okay. Um, let me see. These are a few photos that we put into the video, but I won't, put, I won't show you those right now. Um, let's go through these, okay? So this is um, another room. Um, in this one, I decided to go a little bit more extreme with the processing, I go a little bit more hardcore. I was feeling a little hardcore in here for some reason. Um, and that is actually Bell's shadow in the window. And um, quite disturbingly, I said, Bell, why don't you uh, just look like a devil? And in like 10 milliseconds, she put her hands into these perfect horns. I think that she just practices on her own. It's, but there we go. I mean, looks like some sort of devilish minotaur. Actually, there's a little secret here. If you look over here on her left hip, it looks like she has gout or something. But it's actually because she has uh, some audio recording equipment there since we were filming at the same time. Um, okay, so that's that photo. Um, here's another one. Um, I took a lot of photos without shadows in it. Then I decided to kind of think about the loneliness theme and and use use shadows because I. Something about a human element sometimes adds something. Um, here's another room. Um, and this was so cool even upstairs. Um, here's another one. And a lot of these I decided to go fairly heavy HDR just because of the, uh, the textures and everything I thought were so interesting. Um, this is a sunrise over one of the barns. This is a lonely room. Um, this one's a little bit more moody. Um, but I really like how the sand kind of washes in here right by the doorway. Um, this is another one where the roof has been totally exposed and awesome. Um, this is a panorama that was combined out of many different quadcopter shots that were looking straight down. I love the way it came out. Um, here's another room where uh, nature's taking over. Uh, this is some of the schoolhouses um, where these big sand dunes. I love these lines in the sand dunes. They're so cool. Uh, this is an abandoned bowling alley that's underneath one of the, the rooms that's kind of hidden away down there so there's no sand in there yet. Um, this is kind of a cool photo. This was taken with my um, 35 millimeter f1.4 with a Leica lens and so what's happening in this photo is only only this front doorway is in focus and everything else fades away. And here's the last photo. This is somewhat ridiculous. Um, I'm open to admit. Um, we actually went back over here one night and took a few bottles of wine. This is Curtis Simmons, uh, the uh, Chief Operating Officer of Stuck in Customs Enterprises. Um, he decided to fully disrobe and then just have a, have a little bath there, just have a little, little me time while we took photos. I promise you, he never would have done this a few years ago. I, I've corrupted him by taking him to Burning Man many times and just filling his mind with all my, my devilish thoughts. And you can see, you can see the slippery slope that Curtis is on. All right. Well, thank you for uh, joining me for this episode, and I will see you soon. You know, I'm not a, a painter. Um, how can I do this kind of stuff in my photo? How can I... How can I move people? How can I make them look at it in a second and remember it forever?